In this exercise, I'll show how to rig a robot arm I've constructed here. When you're rigging, there's a basic order to things that'll make it go a lot easier. Pivots, links, IKs, and constraints. Now, you may not end up using all of these in a rig every time, but on this arm, I'm going to see all those things come into play. What I've done so far is model all the objects as separate pieces, name them all, and I've color-coded them so they're easier to find. Now I'm going to deal with the pivots. The big deal first is to get the pins right. I want to have each of the pins with its pivot in the center. So when I put the IK chain on, it goes through the center of the arm correctly. I'll press H to select objects by name and select all six pins, four small and two large. I'll go to the Hierarchy tab on the Command Panel and choose Effect Pivot Only. Then, under Alignment, I'll center them to the object, and you can see all the pivots move. Now I'm ready to deal with the pins on the rest of the objects. I'll start on the upper arm, and still in Effect Pivot Only, I'll click on the Align tool and align its pivot onto its adjacent pin. I'll align this on the X, Y, and Z position from pivot to pivot and press OK. I'll work my way around the object, aligning all the pivots in the right place. For the pistons, I'll pick the piston or the piston shaft and align it to its pin correctly. Here's the other part of the piston and aligning it to its adjacent pin. I'll finish this and show what it looks like when I'm done. I've aligned all the pivots in the right places. We can see from the clusters here around the pins that there are multiple objects with their pivots on those pins. As part of rigging, test every step along the way. Here's the test on the upper arm, for example. I'll pick it, hit E for rotate, and rotate on the x-axis. It rotates in the right place, ready to open up. I'll do the same with the lower arm, selecting it and rotating it on its x-axis to see if it comes out in the right place. Good. Now I'm ready to deal with links. I want to link upstream, from child to parent. So I'll begin with the end of the arm. I'll select it and click on the Select and Link button. Then I'll click and drag from the arm to its pin. Notice how it highlights in blue when it's ready. The pin flashes briefly, and I'm ready to go to the next link. I'll link the pin at this elbow onto the lower arm. Now I'll link the lower arm onto its pin. And finally, the lower pin onto the base, and the base onto the round base plate. This is pretty good so far, but I'll test just to make sure. I'll select the base plate and rotate it on the z-axis. The arm travels as a static. That's how I know it's working. All the links are in the right place, with no pieces left behind except for the pistons. Then I'll pick the lower arm and rotate it, and it takes the upper arm and its pin with it. Now I'm ready to link the pistons. I'll hide the arms to make this easier to see. Each piston has a housing and a shaft. Each one links to its adjacent pin. I'll start with the piston housing for the second piston, click on Select and Link, and link it up to its pin. Then I'll link the pin over to its base, the half rounds. Then I'll pick the shaft of the piston and do the same to its pin, clicking and dragging to link on the pin, and clicking the pin to link to the base. I'll finish the second piston in the same way, linking the piston to the pin, the pin to the base, and since I have it here, the base of the piston to the base of the arm. Then I'll pick the shaft for the piston, link it to its pin, and link the pin onto the piston base. I'll unhide all of my objects and link the piston base onto the upper arm correctly. It flashes briefly, and I think I'm ready. I'll test one more time. I'll select the base, hit E for rotate, and rotate it. Looks like I forgot to do one link here on the upper piston. I'll pick the piston base and select and link it onto the upper arm. Then I'll pick the other piston base and select and link it to the end. 
one more test. You can see as I got caught there why it's so important to test every step of the way. Now I'll rotate it. When I rotate from the base plate, the entire arm moves as a static. When I rotate the lower arm, all of its pieces travel with it. The pistons aren't functional yet. We can see this one is disconnecting, but everything else is working. Same with the upper arm. Click and drag and rotate, the piston pieces go with it. I'll undo the rotation, and I'm ready to put the IK chains on. For the IK, I'll start with the long lower arm and end up on the upper arm. Under Animation, IK Solvers, I'll choose an HI Solver History Independent. It gives me a drag line saying, where is the end of the IK chain? I'll put it on the upper arm. The IK goal shows up right here where the pivot is on the elbow. Here's the test. If I grab on the YZ axis and pull it, it takes all of the arm components with it and lifts it nicely. Then I'm free to take the upper arm here and use FK on it to rotate it out as if it was animating. We may see this kind of control on a mechanical object, and this will work fairly nicely. I'll have one control on the base to spin the whole arm, one control to elevate the arm, and one last control to end up moving the upper arm. With the IK in place, I'm ready for my constraints. I'll hide some objects so we can see this in action. For constraints, I want to use a look at constraint. The reason these pistons have their separate pins is to avoid a dependency loop. I want to have this piston look at the other piston. But if I did that with a look at constraint, 3ds Max would give me an error. So here's how it works. I'll pick the piston housing and under animation constraints I'll choose a look at constraint. It gives me a drag line looking for the target. I'll pick the opposing pin. It flashes briefly and shows me a line from the look at constraint, a sight line. Here in the look at constraint it says it's looking at pin small and is there a view line length? I can leave this alone or add it or subtract it if needed. I do want to keep the initial offset. As you notice, without that checked, it rotated that arm down. Now I'll repeat this on the other side. I'm going to pick the piston shaft and choose Animation, Constraints, Look at Constraint, and look at the opposing pin. Because these are in different places in terms of their dependencies, I don't get a loop. Again, I'll scroll down and check Keep Initial Offset. OK, here's the test. I'll unhide everything. I'll select the IK chain at the end of the arm. And I'll pull it up. OK, well, nothing on the uh, pistons yet, but everything's still moving intact. If I pick the upper arm and rotate it, the pistons opened up correctly. Now obviously I can pull it out and break the piston, but I would clip on the arm anyway. But it's working. The piston halves are looking at each other, everything is chained together, and opening this up looks like a functioning hydraulic piston. I'll finish the look at constraints on the lower piston. I'll pick the piston housing and choose Animation, Constraints, Look at Constraint, looking at the opposing pin. I'll scroll down, check Keep Initial Offset, and move to the shaft. Here's the Look at Constraint, looking at the opposing pin, and checking Keep Initial Offset. OK, last test. I'm going to pick the IK goal, and I may actually want to put a controller on this to make it easier to manipulate. There's the goal, and as I pull it up, the lower piston elongates. Then as I rotate the upper arm out, the upper piston works as well. The rig is ready. The last thing I do in a rig is add controllers. I really never want to pick a mesh and animate it, or pick, a, pick an IK and animate it. I'd like to have my controls distilled down. Here's how I'll make this work. I'm going to hold Control and right click and pick circle. I'll take, take a circle and I'll make it 
viewable, enabled in the viewport as a solid, but not renderable. For this circle, I'll align it onto that end pin, aligning from pivot to pivot on X, Y, and Z. Then I'll take the IK chain and select and link it over to my circle. The link is done, now I have a controller. Here's the last part. I'll take my controller, my circle, and link it back to my base plate. As an alternate, I could make another controller down here on the base plate instead of linking straight to the base plate. Once more, I'll test it. I'll select the base, and I'll rotate it. Everything travels with it as a static object. If I pick the controller, which now allows me to freeze all the rest of the components, and I rotate the controller, nothing happens. If I move the controller, the arm opens up. I've got a mix of control and mesh animation here. For this, I'm really okay with it. You may want to distill this down to finer levels of control and be able to freeze the entire mesh. This will work for now. I've animated the arm so you can see how this all works. As I scrub on the timeline, the arm rotates, opens up, and the end swings out.